to the second in our series of webinars on animal health. Today we are covering equine parasites in better understanding fly control on horses. My name is Ben Watson and I'm one of the directors of Hyperdrug.co.uk, a leading supplier of health advice and products in the UK. I'm being joined by Wendy Talbot, who is a vet and the National Equine Veterinary Manager of Huzuetis. At Hyperdrug, We've been trading since 1828, online since 1998, and we're family business. If you're one of our customers, you know that we keep full patient records for your medication and individually tailored advice for both new and existing customers, and we're pharmacists, microbiologists, and suitably qualified persons on how to give advice. Okay, I'm going to pass you on to Wendy now. Welcome to tonight's webinar. The topic for discussion is the control of flies and other external parasites in horses a subject which I'm sure will be relevant to many of you as the flies and midges reach their peak towards the end of the summer months. During the presentation, we will aim to give you a better understanding of how to approach um, fly and other external parasite control, not only for your horse, but also for your yard environment. I will start with what types of pests can affect horses and why their control is important. We will then move on to the principles of control and what types of products are available. I will give an overview of the active ingredients, what their properties are and how they can be effectively used. Because there are so many products and some fall into the category of prescription medicines which are restricted by advertising regulations, it's necessary for me to describe products using their active ingredient and not their brand name. Although this can seem confusing at first, if you can recognize the active substances, it will make it much easier to understand and compare which product is most suited to your needs in the future. Ectoparasite is the term used to describe those parasites that affect horses externally. As well as flies, which include mosquitoes and midges, these also include things like ticks and mites and lice and in some circumstances, even fleas. We all know that one very good reason for controlling flies and midges is that they can make life very uncomfortable for both the horse and the rider. But there are also very good medical reasons for ensuring a good fly control program for your horse. Flies like to gather on moist, warm areas of the horse, and this means that they are naturally attracted to areas such as the eye, wounds or where the horse is sweated. Infection can easily be introduced leading to conjunctivitis in the eye or non-healing wounds um, on other parts of the body. Many skin conditions are associated with allergy or hypersensitivity to flies and midges and the spread of sarcoids, a type of skin tumour, has been linked to flies. Mites can cause irritation and scaling of the legs especially in breeds with long feathers, and others may play a part in the head shaking syndrome in some horses. In addition, some of these parasites have the potential for spreading serious diseases such as West Nile virus, which is not currently present in this country, but can be fatal to humans and horses. Broadly speaking, the ectoparasites of horses fall into two categories. Those that are classified as insects and those that fall into the arachnida class. Among other distinguishing features, insects have a head, thorax and abdomen, three pairs of legs and usually, but not always, a pair of wing, wings. Many of the common pests of horses, such as flies, midges and lice, fall into the insect class. Arachnida are the spider-like organisms and these include the ticks and the mites. They have four pairs of legs and an antennae. Although we often describe flies simply as flies, there are in fact a wide range of different species that can affect horses. Knowledge of the type of fly that's causing the problem can be useful in deciding how best to, to control it. House flies are mainly a nuisance, but they can carry infection particularly to wounds and to eyes. Stable flies are similar in appearance to house flies, but have piercing mouth parts, which in addition could cause a nasty bite. They are often found on horses' legs, 
causing them to stamp or to kick out. Both of these flies rely on warm, moist areas such as dung, rotting bedding, or even spilt feed material in which to breed. As well as breeding in these areas, the adult flies will be attracted to and land on dung and organic matter and can then pass on bacteria from these to the horse when they land. So it's not hard to see how warm, moist areas of the horse, such as the eye and wounds, will attract flies and become infected very quickly. Black flies are also biting flies, which can occur in swarms in some cases. Horses can develop allergic reactions to their saliva, which may be severe. These flies are more frequently found in areas where there is fast-flowing, clean water, such as streams. Horse flies are typically found around woodlands and are most active on sunny days. Bites can cause large, painful swellings. The horse flies do not usually enter dark areas, so stabling can be an effective means of reducing the bites. Unlike other biting insects, these best pests flourish in years that have been wet and sunny. There are a number of different blowflies, all of which characteristically lay their eggs on dead carcasses or damaged tissue, such as wounds on live animals. The maggot is the larval stage which essentially eats into the flesh, a condition known as fly strike. Serious disease or death can result from secondary bacterial infection and septicemia. Fortunately, this situation is uncommon in horses compared to other animal species, such as sheep. But fly strike can occur in wet, moist areas on the horse, such as neglected wounds or even inside the sheath of male horses. If your horse has fly strike, an immediate veterinary consultation is essential. Bot flies lay eggs on the horse in late summer where they are ingested by the horse, completing their life cycle as larvae in the horse's stomach. Very large burdens can cause stomach irritation and mild colic. Mosquitoes are well-known biting pests. Over 30 species have been recorded in the UK, including those with the potential to spread serious diseases, currently not in the country, such as West Nile virus. Mosquitoes typically prefer still stagnant water for breeding, and changes in our environment and temperature may influence their ability to breed and spread disease in the future. There are many different types of midges, each preferentially bite different areas of the horse, and it's common to see irritation to the underbelly, the ears, the face, the mane, and the tail. An allergic reaction to mid bites is the cause of sweet itch, a condition where horses will excessively rub and bite at themselves, even though there does not appear to be any midges at the time. This is because it only takes a small number of bites to cause a hypersensitivity reaction, and that lasts a lot longer than the midges themselves do. Midges also flourish in warm, wet weather. Traditional methods of fly control rely on any one of many different preparations being applied directly to the horse to either repel or kill adult flies only. While this remains the mainstay of many fly control programs, we are also increasingly aware that a more logical and effective approach will require that the environment and management is also addressed. This is a similar approach to flea control in companion animals, where we know that unless the breeding stages are controlled, then control of the adult flea pop population is unlikely. For flies, the same principles can be applied. First, remove the breeding stages, then control any of the stages that made it through to adult flies. For each of these stages, a combination of management changes and drug treatments is most effective. As previously mentioned, flies are naturally attracted to moist, warm areas, in particular dung and decaying feed or bedding material. Frequent removal of droppings from the pasture and stable will reduce breeding grounds and is also an integral part of effective worm control on the pasture. 
Ensure that the muck heap is well away from stables and grazing paddocks as far as possible, and especially from stables of horses that are particularly affected by flies. Clear up feed and soil bedding promptly, and if there are stagnant ponds, consider getting these areas cleared, or at least keep horses away from them during the worst months in mid to late summer. Remember that black flies actually prefer clear running water, so streams may pose a threat too. In some cases, it may be appropriate to apply a larvicidal insecticide to fly breeding areas. It's important that you only use products that are specifically indicated for a horse's environment and follow the manufacturer's instructions carefully. For the adult stages, first try to keep the flies away from the horse by physically separating them. Horse flies, for example, do not generally favour darker areas, so sometimes stabling can be useful. Many types of midges are more active during dawn and dusk, and this is the basis for stabling horses prone to sweet itch at these times. In addition, screens, nets or fans can be used to prevent fly entry into the stable. Treating the screens and nets, as well as areas where flies congregate, such as ceilings, walls and cracks, with an insecticide designed for use in stables can be extremely helpful. The use of rugs to cover all of the body in conjunction with a face mask is essential for many horses in the summer months, and they still offer one of the best ways to prevent fly irritation. The ingredients used in fly products can be described as having either repellent or insecticidal activity. Repellents aim to make the horse less attractive to the flies, but do not necessarily kill them. There are a vast array of products that claim to have repellent activity. These include, but are not limited to products containing active, such as citriodiol or DEET. As an owner, it can be very difficult to choose which product will work best for you. It has been suggested that some fly species, such as horse flies, are harder to repel than other species. So if one product does not seem to work well for your horse, consider trying a different product with either a different formulation or a different ingredient, as it may be that a particular species of midge or fly is to blame and that they are more sensitive to a particular active ingredient. Products that claim to have a repellent activity usually fall under the category of biocytes and are currently regulated at national level by the Health and Safety Executive, the HSE. Although this is in the process of moving to the EU, and currently you may be able to see that products have been authorised by an EU number. So if you are buying a biocidal product intended to have a repellent effect against unwanted insects, you should ensure that it has either an HSE number or it has been authorised by the EU. Insecticides are available for use directly on the animal, and they aim to kill the fly as soon as possible after contact. For some of these, they may have little inherent repellent activity, and unless you are aware of this at the outset, it can appear that the product is not working effectively. In fact, these products can be very useful even though some contact between the fly and the horse is allowed, because they kill so rapidly and the fly or midge is not required to bite for them to work. For maximum effectiveness, treatment should be started before the fly season has begun and continued at regular intervals throughout the fly season. Because insecticides have a medicinal function by killing the insects, those for use on the animal are classified as veterinary medicinal products. Because of this, they require a license from the Veterinary Medicines Directorate, the government department which controls and regulates all veterinary medicinal products to ensure their responsible, safe and effective use. Detailed product information setting out all the licensed uses can be found on the VMD website. 
Currently in the UK, there are only four different active ingredients licensed in veterinary medicinal products for use on horses. The first is pyrethrum, belonging to a group of chemicals known as pyrethrins, insecticides which are derived from the chrysanthemum flower. The next two actives are cypermethrin and permethrin. These are synthetic forms of the natural pyrethrins belonging to a group known as synthetic pyrethroids. The last is benzyl benzoate, a compound formed from benzyl alcohol and benzoic acid, which has been used as an insecticide for many years. The effectiveness of each active ingredient will depend on the species of fly or midge and the severity of challenge, as well as the concentration of the active ingredient in the product and whether or not it has been combined with any other active ingredient. Each product has its own specific license and you should check carefully if it has been approved for the use that you require. Cypermethrin has the longest expected activity. It is available as a concentrated solution for dilution to be applied as a spray and as a prescription only medicine. Fly control may last for up to one month in some circumstances. Permethrin is available in poron solutions, specifically as an aid in the reduction in the signs of sweetage. In addition, it may be available as a product combined with citronella in a ready-to-use topical application for sweet itch and general fly control. Reapplication is advised every two to seven days depending on the preparation. The botanical extract pyrethrin can be broken down by sunlight or deactivated by the insect itself. For commercial use, it's combined with a synergist piperonyl butoxide in a lotion for sweet itch control. Benzyl benzoate is available in an emulsion as an aid in reducing sweet itch. Initial application is twice daily, reducing to every three to four days as required. As for people, different horses can react differently to different products. It is advisable to test a small patch of skin on the horse 24 hours prior to using any topical preparation to test for allergy or adverse reactions. If reactions do occur, wash the horse using only water and consult your veterinary surgeon for specific advice. Don't forget to protect your own safety. It is important that the manufacturer's instructions are carefully followed. Where dilution is required, this must be carried out precisely and the product never applied in a more concentrated form. Ensure that all operator safety advice is followed and some people uh, as some people can suffer reactions to these ingredients. Ensure that all operator safety advice is followed as some people can suffer reactions to these ingredients. Remember insects can still cause a significant problem for horses at this time of year, especially when the weather is sunny after a wet period. In particular, midges may still be active at dawn and dusk and can cause considerable irritation. In late summer, early autumn is the time that the bot fly will appear to lay eggs on the horse, which then get swallowed to develop into larvae in the horse's stomach. Continuing good fly control now may help to reduce the chances of bot eggs being laid on your horse. Moving from the flies to lice, there are two species of louse that can affect horses. The biting louse, which is typically found on the back and hind quarters of the animal, and the sucking louse, which is more often found in the mane, tail and fetlocks. Lice are host specific, which meaning thankfully they can spend their complete life cycle on the horse or donkeys and do not infect other species such as humans. Lice infestation is more common in young, debilitated animals, often in conjunction with worm burdens, which make the animal more run down and prone to the lice. 
In severe cases, anemia may develop due to blood loss. Clinical signs are intense itching and irritation when the animal is touched, often associated with uh, obvious twitching type of motion. The coat can be patchy and it may appear matted with areas of self-trauma due to the itching. Lice can easily be seen with the naked eye by parting the hair coat and seeing if there is anything crawling. Using a bright torch can help with this as it warms the lice up slightly, causing them to crawl while the light makes it easier to see. Louse powders are available and many are designed to have repellent rather than killing activity. Again, this can sometimes be a source of disappointment if you are expecting a repellent product to kill lice that are already present. Read the label carefully for the description of either a repellent or insecticidal action. For treating established infestations, an insecticidal product is required. Licensed cypermethrin, permethrin and pyrethrum products are suitable for use. They are applied to the whole coat using a sponge or spray or as an insecticidal shampoo. Retreatment may be required at two weeks. In addition, you will need to ensure that brushes and rugs are all treated with an appropriate insecticide to prevent reinfection. Horses, like other mammals, can be affected by ticks. These are a num member of the arachnida class, which live the majority of their life cycle off the animal in the environment, but can attach to feed on the horse's blood at certain times of the year. The most common tick to affect horses in the UK is the sheep tick, Exodus ricinus. This species usually completes its life cycle in three years, with each year being associated with a different stage. In order to molt and progress to the next stage, the tick must leave the vegetation, attach to an animal and engorge on a blood meal. When seen on the horse, they appear as brown, engorged sac-like structures whose mouth parts are firmly attached to the animal. Ticks need to have an environment with high humidity in which to survive. And for this reason, they are usually found in areas of high rainfall with a thick vegetation layer, such as woodland or long grass. In this country, they are most likely to affect horses during the spring and autumn months. For the main part, ticks are associated with nothing more than an irritating local reaction to the bite. However, they can carry a bacterium which is the causative agent of Lyme disease in humans. This disease produces vague symptoms with fever and a skin rash, but can progress to affect the nervous system and internal organs. Although this has been previously reported in horses, it is considered to be rare in this country. Preventing ticks in areas prone to this parasite can be difficult. Ticks prefer to inhabit long grass where they can attach to legs or the underbelly of the horse as it passes. Therefore, removing the horse from this type of grazing may be beneficial in preventing transmission. There are a number of repellent products with a claim for the control of ticks. However, none of these are veterinary medicinal products, and therefore they do not have a medicinal treating claim. Your veterinary surgeon can advise you on products which may be prescribed off-label if there is a particular concern of infection. Remember, ticks should never be pulled out with the help, the help of a specialist tick remover, which will ensure all that mouth parts are removed. There are two types of mites that affect horses. The burrowing mites will actually enter the skin to live in the deeper layers, whereas the non-burrowing mites are found on the skin surface or within the hair coat of the horse. Burrowing mites include Demodex and Sarcoptes, the causative agents of sarcoptic mange or scabies. Both of these mites will usually only affect horses if the animal is already ill or run down for another reason, or if there has been a large challenge from the mites, for example, if infected straw has been used for bedding. 
Demodex can cause areas of hair loss, especially around the face and the eyes. Sarcoptes causes an intense generalized itching with scaling of the skin. Sore areas often develop from self-trauma in response to the itching caused by the mites. Scabies can cause a similar condition in humans, so care is needed when handling affected animals. In both cases, if an infection is suspected, veterinary advice should be sought for a full clinical examination and appropriate treatment. The non-burrowing mites, which most often affect horses, are Sauroptes and Coreoptes. Sauroptes mites can live in the ear and can be a cause of head shaking in some horses. Infection can also affect the mane and tail and spread to the rest of the body. Symptoms include itching and areas of oozing, damaged skin, which may be complicated by bacterial infection. Coreoptes typically live in the long hair on the legs of feathered breeds, where they can cause intense itching, leading the horse to stamp, often violently. Secondary bacterial infections and chronic skin disease is again common. Again, none of these medicines have a license claim for the treatment of mites. If you suspect that your horse has mites, you should contact your veterinary surgeon for specific advice. Removing the long hair from feathered legs and using a mild antiseptic and soothing lotion can help with the secondary effects of bacterial infection. However, antibiotics and specific treatment may be required. In conclusion, there are a wide range of ectoparasites that affect equines. Their control is required to provide a more comfortable environment for the horse and rider, and also to help reduce the occurrence of numerous diseases. Good ectoparasite control often requires a long-term, integrated approach, which considers each stage of the parasite's life cycle. Control can ultimately be achieved through a combination of management and pharmacological interventions. Thank you very much, Wendy. That was excellent. And that's, I think, the conclusion of um, the webinar on fly control. And coming up soon is the next webinar, which will be on the assisted small redworm. Thank you very much, Wendy.